we're finally going to get started on uh, the restore, partial restoration of my 760 Power Master. Again, variant one, Tootsie Roll four stock, and the rather flash looking uh, wood stock here. It's got a few scrapes on it. But, oops, got a few scrapes on it. Might leave it the way it is unless I can find some stain. I was thinking antique maple might look nice. As you can see, little streaks in the wood. that look like flame maple or tiger maple so it's all they got two or three different names for the same wood okay where the angle they cut it at I'm not real sure about that curly maple is a whole other animal um, anyway I just thought I'd show you guys this again and this is the the 761 XL barrel, a new old stock, very, very good rifling in this barrel. But as you can see, I'll just get the sun to shine on that just right. But you can see the, the, the bluing is wanting, there's a little rust showing through and everything, and the, the metal wasn't polished very good at all before they blued it. But it's new old stock, it's absolutely brand new, never used from. 66 to 70 in this one. This one built June 68. So this barrel is of the same vintage. And just to line up the notch in the breech there, the notch on this one. You can see all these little holes and whatnot all line up beautifully with where they're supposed to go. The holes for the rear sight, the barrel band with the cap. The date code is on the end of this cap right here, and one screw hole for the uh, front sight, you can see right there. And here's the holes for the rear sight, the dimple for the barrel band, and the breech. Okay. That hole there is the port for the gas valve, where it goes, the, air, the gas goes through the, through the bolt and behind the pellet. That's how it works. Interesting when you start learning these things, you know. Okay, anyway. Let me just refinish that anyhow. You guys can take a, have a little vote or poll in the, in the uh, comments below if you want me to refinish that in like an antique maple stain or not. And of course, uh, True oil. Just make it all oil finish. True oil is like a French polish. You use it like a French polish, and its constituents are very much the same, which, as I remember, was varnish and shellac mixed together. Learned that in uh, ninth grade industrial arts. Our, our teacher was was really really hip on woodworking and teaching us as men children that this was something you're a guy is supposed to know how to do so okay anyway my trial gloves again and we'll get going on this i will try to get to the bluing part i don't know it's going to take a while to after i clean it up and then Rinse the chemical off in a pail of water I got down there to uh, then take the cloth and dry it off real good. And I wish I'd have gotten that dang little trigger air blower thing like you hook up to an air hose on your compressor. Well, I've got an air uh, Badger airbrush and the airbrush compressor they sell, it's about yay big. That you run your airbrush on, and they've got that wee little uh, air tools and the little uh, old air jet blower thingy. Great for dusting off model cars or gun stocks when you're standing on and blowing out all the screw holes and stuff on these things when you're working on them. But 
we'll come up with a workaround. We do have a few Q-tips left. We'll see if we can do with that besides the uh, Dewey ball bearing handle cleaning rod there. Oh, I can't get a hold of that. I can't get the figure out there to pull these gloves down. It fits so snug when you've got carpal tunnel and rheumatoid arthritis. You can't get your fingers to clamp down on anything. It's very hard to hold something or hold it tightly. That's my trigger hand too, you know what I'm saying? Get that to stop rolling, grabbing that one. Okay, anyhow. We've got a decent amount of uh, birchwood casing, bluing, and raw stream over left there. And then cleaner degreaser. I got the perma blue over there, and I, I might have enough left to do this barrel. I've done it. A couple of guns worth of uh, blue parts and, and stuff like that, and you wind up wasting a lot of it because once you, you pour a little cup to use it, it's contaminated by various things in, in the metal because it's a chemical rusting process, right? So uh, you can't pour it back in the bottle, which is a dang shame. I need more money to to buy chemicals and stains and sandpaper and all that sort of stuff I use besides the seal and piston kits and barrels and whatever I need to restore these uh, rifles. Okay, anyway. Oh, and I also got a few cotton balls left here from, I see some stain on that plastic from when we were working on the ramrod for the other the other uh, show, and these brownells, like a tan color, pat uh, cleaning patches. They're thick. They're almost like a like a muslin or something. You know the kind of material they cover mattresses and box springs with. That's muslin. Anyway, it shows you. So it shows you cheesecloth to say that's muslin. No, I'm sorry, you're wrong. I'm not gonna argue about it. This is muslin. This is the kind of material that. They made patches out of for their muzzle loaders and stuff out of old mattresses, pillowcases, uh, box spring cut, the, the cloth on the outside. You know, that's why you never saw those thrown away by the old timers because they used it to, to patch their balls for their muzzle loaders. Okay, anyway. It's a uh, bluing and rust remover. That's auxilic acid, nitric acid, I think, and uh, sulfuric acid all mixed together. We used to use uh, auxilic acid to we worked at Ford and Brook Park and clean one. In other words, that when they, we still had the foundry, that, that that stuff that looked like rust all over your paint and bumpers and glass and whatever. It's the stuff out of the stacks from the foundry process made us mist in the air and you're breathing that crap you know we, we find it, we had filters and then sometimes when the filter would get dirty they just shut it off then we got the water mist filters like they started using that the steel plant in Lorraine here uh, US Cody and uh, see if that little little dab will do you will be enough you don't need a lot I've been doing that with these chemicals, trying to make these bottles last as long as possible. But I've got, as a matter of fact, I only really have the big long Kentucky rifle there with the barrel and the tube over there, and the, that the 760 variant one. But I've also got the 760D Pump Master. It's all plastic from uh, April 1998. This is 30 years. Younger than that one over there, the barrel and the pump tube's rusty, so that's got to come apart. Even though the thing, thing sh the thing shoots beautifully, and I got my old Weaver V22 on there, old Weaver Dual X. The 22 scope works nice for the ones that don't have a lot of recoil. You can't put that thing on a, on a brake barrel. Forget about it. 
Okay, let's see if we can get these cotton balls out of there. Okay, I think maybe. Did I get the right one? Um, Okay. Yeah, I got the right one. Just wanted to make sure. Did pick up the wrong. Did start with the wrong bottle. It's easier to do when you get old. You start getting ahead of yourself because your mind is like racing, contrary to slowing down, which would be popular belief. Oh, look at that. Rub it on, let it sit a little bit, and boy, it takes that stuff right off. see some soapy suds on there. That's not a chemical drying on there, that's just soap suds. Same thing anyway. This smells like that, that solution the women used to get in those box kits at the drugstore to perm their own hair with at home. Like a chemically soaked baby diaper I said last time. Well, I, I, I'm amending that. It smells like home per hair perming solution. I forget what the stuff is. My mom used to tell me what it was. I'd be lending an extra hand or two here and there while she's in the kitchen going through the process of perming her hair. The women in her day did that, you know. But, uh, This one, being new old stock, would be easier to get the blowing off and whatever, a little bit of rust and stuff like that. And this, this, uh, this is blueing and rust remover, and yet it does work very well. That 760D over there is going to be the acid test, because that's got the most rust on the barrel of any of them, including the, the black powder Kentucky barrel over there for the old CBA over here, the, the long light colored stock sitting in there. We'll get to that on uh, black powder sugar. I really need to get that uh, charge that's been stuck in there for 40 years out so I can clean the barrel and maybe have them uh, cut the end of the barrel off and put a plug in it under the tang. I had one guy on 18, the black powder gun shop, tell me that uh, they, could, they could put one on. He asked if I wanted to put one on and I, when I was there once. Way down on Route 18, off of, uh, the hell did I do? Take 83 south to 42 and then, or, or 62 or something, and 18 went to the left, not too far from his gun shop, old black powder gun shop, where there was this popular uh, one tank trip destination, the old, old general store painted white with a gravel parking lot up front. Uh, I don't remember the name, if any of you do, put it in the comments below. Uh, you used to have a half-acre garden out there, too. Me, my father, and our, our buddy, Mr. Smith, down the street. He used to, he was Irish feller. We're all friends and everything. We used to grow potatoes and beans, all kind of beans, and then we had a huge amount of kimbacks. They're regular, plain white potatoes. Get a lot of get a lot of uh, russets now. The Idaho, so-called Idaho potatoes. We grew Kimbecks. 
the lumpier looking, plain old, same old, white, general use potatoes. I like Kimbecks. You don't see those anymore. That's, they can grow them things really big. We had one big as a baby's head once. That I put in my pile on the balcony over winter to where they would keep keep them dry because it was screened in and all that, so they wouldn't get wet. But they kept them cool. Like you kept them in a corner of the basement, or like apple. You wrap apples in newspaper, like I did these potatoes, and I put them out on the balcony to stay cool, and they lasted through the winter. But, it is one great big baby's head sized potato, old Kimbeck. I cut that thing up and made sliced potatoes, you know, where you use a little little butter and, and oil and then seasoning, seasonings to cook them tender. And uh, a good 12, 13 inch pan, it filled that pan to heaping. I barely got the lid on. Just that one potato. And Contrary to, to the old wives' tale, potatoes do not get mealy and they do not get stringy when they get big. It doesn't do any of that at all, ever. The mealy potato is an old one that's getting ready to, to rot and turn mushy. That's when they get mealy. But just because it gets real big, no. They're perfectly fine. And a huge potato is just as good as a small one. So that's a little bull. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. I almost forgot to do the ends of the barrel. I always forget to do the crown and the breech end. Darn. I forgot to make sure. Got the end done real nice. It's actually looking pretty good. It needs polishing. You, know, you got to clean the metal up real nice. If you got a, a even a washer motor or something on with a gr bench grinder conversion kit on your bench in the garage, put a buffing wheel on it, or even the kind that's got the flaps on it with the, the fine emery tape stuck on it, like, and polish that. Polish it real nice, and you turn it around as you run it through, and you know, polish that metal so that you get like a mirror finish on that barrel, and then blew it. It'll shine like a like a young Filipino girl's hair. We had one at Northwood Junior High, pretty girl, a natural sort of tan skin, you know, but just like Dad said when he was in the Seabees during World War II in the Philippines, fighting the Japanese. He said that the Filipino girl's hair was so black it had it had a steely blue sh shine like a gun barrel in the sunlight. Well, that's what I try to do, so it has a blue bluish sheen in the sunlight. I don't have anything to polish it real good, but uh, I I do understand how. I'm going to patch through this sucker to get that. Good thing. I use those little cups for on my my scale, and there you saw me weighing the guns with that time. To uh, the plain cool water tap water here, by the way, to measure out small amounts of sugars and uh, and um, hops and stuff like that when I'm brewing beer on my Brew Vision channel. Wash that, rinse the acid off, 
and when you go to use the boiling solution by the way once you get it blued to the color you want or the, the depth you want I should say you have to rinse it too because it's a chemical rusting process it'll make regular brown rust if you don't so you basically got to use blue and rust remover the mixture of acids as you can see it takes the rust and everything off and just leaves you see like a brown a dark blackish charcoal colored modeling on the metal surface of the metal that's where the rust was it leaves that behind just like when you're using a mixture of vinegar and water on a car body to get the rust off the surface of the metal and you wipe it down with cloth soap or dampened in, in water to take and a dry one on the other hand right behind it to uh, get the get the vinegar solution off okay you do that and then you got to dry it off which we're going to do right now I got a box with a with a, a piece of wood I use behind the backstop or with the box and the wood on top of this thing you see me using to uh, put my bench rust bags on so I just use that for a little table over here great for an incidental table gloves get a little damp it's actually even being nitrile it's still hard to get all the moisture off completely. You can sort of see that they're not a little moist yet. Okay, turn that around the other way. Fold the cloth over so I can bounce the barrel in. It doesn't touch the table. The table's a little moist yet. Um, let's see. Now. Yeah. Regular cleaning patches and Dewey ball bearing handle cleaning rod. Nylon covered stainless. It's got a spear tip jag there. I'm going to patch it too through that thing to see if I can. These things get curled up and they fold over so bad sometimes you can't. Almost can't uncurl it to your thing. Be careful when you spear the patch, you don't pull it over the end of this thicker part here. The little ribs on it. That that's supposed to the patch is supposed to fold over that as it goes down the barrel. Look at that. That still had the dirty motor oil rust preventive in the barrel all those decades ago. How about that? Wild, huh? Not good. And I broke off the spear tip jag in, in the end of the cleaning rod there. So I had to use the, the corner of that little screwdriver there to get down in, in the end of the ramrod here and unscrew a, about two threads on the broken off threaded part. So I could, I could use these uh, bent needle nose here, spring loaded, to get a hold of so I could, un, I could unscrew the ramrod to pull the broken piece out and put my spare on. I always buy a spare, spare cleaning jag. Or, or the adopter or whatever 
get two of them so if one breaks off you can pick the, uh, the, the threaded part out of there and put, put another one on. That's $41.95 for that thing. One of the sites, I forget which, rifle, they sell rifle stuff too. I mean, powder burner rifle stuff. Anyway, and this, these came from two Pittsburgh six packs, six pack sets. I bought at the Harbor Freight and Salvage. We got a store in the old Sears uh, Tool and Garden Center up there that moved out on the corner of Detroit. On the corner of Detroit and 301, otherwise known as Detroit and Abbey Road, or 254 and 301, whichever you want to think of it. But these Pittsburgh. They're made in China, but they're nice. They come in really handy. This is one of the times I've I really needed the good old bent needle nose. So anyway, I can, I can clean that again when I get when I get time. Put them broken pieces in there. I can get rid of them later. So anywho. There's the barrel all de-blued and pretty clean. You got a piece of this I was a couple pieces I was using on other things like the uh, the stock on the uh, old CVA Kentucky rifle. Got one piece left to to do this with. I don't want to get any of that. I mean, uh, I don't want to get any of this in there that I rinsed off into that water on this after I blew it to you know, rinse this chemical off. You got to keep keep your rinses and everything separate. One chemical is not compatible with the other. Now, when you're looking at this, I don't know if you guys can see that. But there's rings around the metal, like where the, the cutting tool went slowly like this, but not slowly enough. Because you can still see them. Like lines on a 33 and a third uh, record. Yeah, I know that's, that's capophonic sound to some of you guys, but hey, that's what we had at one time. Okay, that's shining up pretty decent. It's still kind of ringy, spotty. i to make up my mind what to call that. Well, I'm going to be polishing the metal really good down to about right there because the, it'll go inside the action out to about here. And the rear sight holes are right here, so the action only comes out to maybe here. So I'll polish. I'll blue the whole thing and only polish it back to close to this front part of the notch, the breech notch there. Just smart to bang your fingers together. Also, I want it to look have better bluing than stock, but I also want it to look like it was just maybe a factory one that was done a little better. That's one of the things I do on these rifles, get the stains close and do a good job on the bluing, but not like highly polished custom hot tank bluing and everything, because then you're taking it too far away from the actual rest proper restoration. Make it a little better than it was, but not radically better where it looks like a full-on custom shop gun. That's the secret to the whole thing. That's, that's looking pretty good. I'm drinking my barrel. 
go around this way go like that to kind of get it clean but go around this way with those grooves to try to clean it up some more then we'll hit it with the cleaner degreaser and then the perma blue so we've got about that much left if that so hopefully we can get this thing blued today and let it, it's got a cure for 24 hours, so it'd be like tomorrow afternoon before I could do anything with it. Remove the sights from the other one, stick it on this one. Stick it on this one. I think those other sights are in the bluing's in good enough condition where I can just leave those stuck. I'm only doing a partial restoration on this one. I won't be refinishing the receiver or anything. Uh, a little bit of a little bit of black epoxy or or black rustoleum sprayed on a Q-tip to get down in the, new, in the screw holes where I'm going to mount a weaver rail. I'm going to custom cut a, a weaver rail or a modify one to fit on top of the receiver to put a, put that 4x32 scope that's on the 160 Pell gun now on, on this uh, 760 V1 so that I can put the, the center the center point six by thirty two on on the one sixty since it's got more range. You see the charcoal colored stuff on that pad it's definitely pulling some some of that over the rust spots where it, where it leaves those charcoal colored sort of dimply speckles that's the base where the rust joined the metal as near as I could explain it to you you're sitting here looking at it you can tell Look like over here, and then over here, down to about there, and you can see it's a little shinier. Um, well, there is a piece of sandpaper in there. I might just, as you can see, down to about right there, over here. This is the front of the barrel. And Look to the to that side, and you can see it's a lot shinier than over here. There's nothing left on there that says two thirteen Q letter V. Stuff. This has got to be four or six hundred bit at least. Let's see if I can. Cut 
some of them dug on little ridges off there from the original machine job. They didn't take one really, really, really slow cut to make a finer finish on there with the machine tool itself, the actual little stick with the bit cut on it. Or they got a thing that holds a, a, a square one that we called diamond because the, the corners had the sharp edges cut out and you could turn them around and use them four to eight times depending on how they were made to do the cutting. But they want to crank these things out so naturally they do it a little fast. They do it just as fast as they can and get a half decent. And you can see that's the kind of finish the factory put on that thing and it could, you could really sit here and take quite a while to uh, to sand that out of there and get it smooth and polished and everything. I'm just on a lathe, a lathe I could use emery tape and get, the, get it done in no time. Okay, now we'll wrap the clean, clean end of the pad around there and we'll set the barrel on a cloth down there. To, you don't bang the end of the barrel around, it's got something soft to sit on while you're doing your thing. Let's see, you can see the kind of shine that's getting to it. Looking a little better. Still Looking stock, but a little better. You see what I mean when the rifle's done? It, it looks basically factory new with a better quality staining job. Using the original stocks, you know, stuff like that. So the receiver and no trigger and all that's going to be original finish on this thing. Because some of those are alloy and you can't blue alloy, you have to paint it. Since bluing is a chemical rusting process where the chemicals are designed to react with the steel. Steel, iron, you know, either one. Actually feel it a bit smoother too. Don't feel so ridgy. This side's okay, but this side it had the white printing on it is a, a, a little coarser. Works a little better. You know. Shined up half decent.
15. Now let's see if I can get down in the breech notch here and polish up the black parts because you'll see that. Doesn't take long, but it does take a little patience. Get it cleaned up real good so that it'll you cut the machining ridges down just a little bit more. Besides the uh, all those little speckle marks from the from the rust and whatever pitting might have been in the metal. They didn't want to take use too many too much time on too many machining steps because if once you do that, then uh, you're spending more money and the cost go up, goes up. Okay, there we go. Pretty decent. Turn it around to the clean side, which is a hair smoother. Go over it one more time just to make sure. Cleaned up real nice. Alright. Okay, there we are. That's the part of the barrel over here. You can see the one screw hole there for the front blade sight. Nice and clean. for a cleaner degreaser. Here, I just dumped the water out and then rinsed the, the little glass in the bucket and put that much more water back in there. I can't mix the chemicals after each step. I've got three different chemicals and i got to change the rinse water three times. You can't let the little bits of chemicals mix together or it'll ruin the next step. Okay. I bumped the tripod. Sorry about this. I kind of repositioned the camera best I could since I can't get behind it. It's so close in here. Okay, we're done with the blue and rust remover. Cleaner degreaser. Got now is the perma blue. Oh, man, I got Got a lot of stock of the brown nose patches right here. Him. Little little uh, hefty uh, plastic bathroom cuts you get from the grocery stores down right handy. save a little bit in there just I'll be very lucky if I if I got enough I don't know just dump it all in. 
pretty lucky if I got enough left to blue to blue that. Works pretty quick. <laughs> that made me a little over an eighth of an inch on the bottom of this cup and brother that's it. Yeah. pieces and not crumble the darn thing up like that. This is gonna smell like a funky baby diaper. more of the perma blue web don't I'm gonna have to wait till I can buy some more. There's not enough bluing whatever it is ability left in there to get that dark brown thing.
just not getting any darker. I should have used the cleaner degreaser on there. Make sure we've got a little. It's just not taking. I don't know why it won't take. I don't have enough left. I just simply did not have enough of that stuff left. I thought I, I might, but I don't. It's turning into this like water mixed with powdered charcoal instead of a real light blue. I can't get it any darker, I really can't. Just starting to look half decent. Well, I got there ain't no more. I have to put off finishing brewing this thing until I can get somebody to buy me another bottle of Plumber Brew. Where is it? That stuff is done. There's just not enough brewing power left, and I need to. You gotta use quite a bit, of, quite a bit of it to get that to brew on it. Can't get no more out of it. Just trying to keep it wet with the stuff, thinking that would make it rust, do the chemical rusting thing some more, but it's not, it's not getting any darker. So that's it for now. Still got to rinse it off and everything. And of course, run some more patches down the barrel to get that all cleaned out. It's just not nearly as, as good as I would, I would prefer it to be. See if bubbles come up on the bottom of the pour water down the barrel. Of course, with that dirty motor oil rust print that they had in there. And got one good patch down there. Not much of it left in there, so I'm going to have to clean it. Okay. It's got enough on there to protect it, I guess, but not enough to, to be a good job. See what I mean? It's a good first coat, but didn't have enough left to, to go any further. Okay. 
Okay. Clean the barrel out inside. Just get the doggone gloves dry so I can get in there and. Some more of those mechanics paper towels, but I don't. Okay. And there's the first coat of bluing. Still see the metal shining through too much though is the point. There's enough to start but not enough to finish. So we'll really have to take it up again when uh, I can figure out a way maybe use PayPal credit to get some more of the perma blue. Another bottle of perma blue definitely and maybe some uh, antique maple stain to redo the stock. I might just redo it. The scrapes and stuff on the bus stock and where I broke it needs to be sanded down anyway. So that's it for this episode. So good, good Lord willing the creeks don't rise. We'll see you again.